Hey everyone, welcome to another Ink Spot review here on The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong and I'm glad to have you back. So I don't do a lot of ink reviews, um, despite the fact that I've got more ink than one person could use in about 50 lifetimes sitting on the shelves behind me. Um, but I do try to do at least one a month, sometimes two a month, because I know A, people really like them, and B, uh, I've got all this ink, I might as well use it. Uh, so in, in that spirit, I wanted to, to get another ink review or two done. So I've got a really exciting one today. Uh, today we are going to be looking at Bung Box Sumaragi, uh, and I'm, again, as I say this all the time, I don't speak Japanese, I'm sure someone will cor correct my pronunciation, Sumaragi, um, which is Imperial Purple. Now, I bought this ink as I have bought a lot of things for Season 3 at the 2015 DC show. Um, it is available for sale here in the United States through Van Ness, which is at vanness1938.com. I believe they are the only U.S. retailers who are carrying Sailor Bung Box inks. Bung Box is a uh, retailer in Japan. They get their own special limited editions of certain pens and their own... Uh, they have their own line of inks that is manufactured by Sailor to their color specifications. And I, the, the two ladies who run, but run Bung Box were in the DC show, at the DC show in 2015, and brought the remaining stock of Bung Box in these bottles. So I, have to, I had to pick them up. And the main reason I bought the ink was not the ink itself, but the bottle. So you've got a kind of just a, a, a tall bottle here with kind of the foil... Um, design, kind of understated, nothing too special here. Got the Sailor logo on top and then Gentle Ink and then the, the little stick-on label for the Imperial Purple. What makes this particular ink special, though, is the bottle. You get these really lovely vase-shaped bottles, which you don't unfortunately are not available anymore. Um, these, these bottles are out of production um, and they have stopped uh, they have stopped making them, and instead, the bottles come in basically the same shape bottles as all other Sailor inks, which I've talked about before. I'm not a huge fan of. I, I don't care for these particular bottles. Um, these lovely, lovely vase bottles um, from the old Bung Box days are basically, you can't find them anymore. So, unfortunately, if you want this ink, you won't be able to get it in this bottle, and the main reason I bought these inks, I didn't even know if I was going to like them. They didn't have a lot of stock left. But I bought the inks because I wanted the bottles. So even if I hated the ink, I could use the bottle for something else later on. Because this, it's got a wide base, but it's tall and narrow, which means you can ink from it easily. It's got a decent opening on the top. This is one of the, the better bottles for inking a pen in my collection of inks. Um, it's certainly no Carandash chromatics bottles, but uh, but really quite nice. Apparently they had a very difficult time with the manufacture of those bottles and couldn't get them anymore. Um, so, as I mentioned, the color is imperial purple. It is a rich, deep purple with a lot of blue undertones, very complex ink, nice gold sheen. So what I'll do is I'll write it out with a few different pens, then I'll walk you through the more in-depth tests that I did on a few different paper types, and then we will kind of wrap up talking about value. So, here we go. I'm using a Rhodia dot pad, as I so often do in my reviews here, and we will start off with a fine nib. This is a Jin Hao 599. Um, nice dark saturated color, but you can see a lot of, of uh, purple there. It's got a little bit of a violet undertone there, so very heavy on the blues. Uh, then we move to a medium. This is a La Mi Vista. V-I-S-T-A. And we pick up a broad. A Lamy All Star. And you can see, now I've, I've said this in my other ink videos, I use the same pens in every ink video um, because I like the consistency of it. The medium Vista is kind of a dry nib. The 
it's the broad is um, a rather wet nib, so you can see it gets a little bit darker and you start to get more shading when you move up to the broad. Uh, the next pen is a 1.5 millimeter, and here you can see it's really wet and really broad. Uh, this is this is a stub nib, and this is a Twisby Vac 700. I really like this. Is an ink that looks superb when it's wet. It just it's got this beautiful, juicy, lovely flow that I just really, really like. Then we have for a flex nib. I have to apologize that I didn't actually. I'm just going to move the mic so, for, so you can hear this a little bit better as I write. Okay, so you can uh, you can tell my <laughs> my flex writing is not great, um, but it's it's getting better. I'm working on it. Um, little bit of railroading in a couple of spots. Uh, I was going too fast on this pen. This is actually one of the best flowing inks I have used in this Custom Heritage 912 ever. Um, but if I go too fast, the feet on that that pen does have a hard time keeping up. And then just kind of. To wrap everything up, let's pull out the big boy here. I forgot how to make my E's. I have to go relearn that again. It's been a long time. Also, my italics is not too great either. But you can get a really, really nice feel of what this ink looks like. Rich, rich, deep, velvety purple. Now, I've talked about my love of purples many, many, many times, uh, so it will come as no surprise that I really, really like this ink. Um, but in addition to how much I like the color, the way this ink performs is just shocking. And if you've used a lot of Sailor inks, you know Sailor inks kind of across the board are some of the best performing inks out there. So the fact that this Sailor Bungbox ink is 
this good shouldn't be a huge surprise. So now I'm going to zoom the overhead camera out a little bit and show you some of the writing samples that I have done to give you a, a bigger picture of, of some of the other tests that I've done on this ink. So here is the Rhodia dot pad. This is an 80 GSM paper. Um, very, very wet writing up here, very, very dark. And I'll see if I can get the sheen to show up for you here. I certainly can down here. You can see the sheen when this ink puddles. It's really rich, goldish sheen here. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to overlay this with some photos of the sheen. I can get photos better than I can on video of, of sheening. Um, really lovely ink, rich color. It reminds me of that crushed purple velvet you see in, you know, imperial uh, shawls and that sort of thing. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not up on my, my Regency <laughs> terminology here. So uh, got the same nibs that I used there. Um, you can see the colors. Dry times on this ink are a little long. That's not terribly surprising considering how deeply, deeply saturated this ink is. 25 to 30 seconds, that's actually on Rhodia paper. It's not terrible, um, but it is longer than you would want if you're you know, flipping pages really quickly. Um, there is some shading, but being super saturated, I'm actually surprised at how much shading there is considering the saturation of the ink, but it's not like something that you're going to get on a diamine autumn oak or Apache sunset or anything like that. Here's the Q-tip swatch. And again, the thing that I really wanted to show off was the sheen there. There we go. You can see the sheen um, kind of really nicely there. Uh, did rubbed it with some water on a Q-tip and kept a fair bit there. On the water drip test, I let that sit for about 30 seconds. It took away most of the color. You can see a little bit of ghosting there. Um, ammonia, it was somewhat resistant, and it was surprisingly resistant to bleach. So um, is it water resistant? Is it a permanent ink? Not even close, but could it withstand getting wet, a little wet? Yeah, I think this is an ink that could withstand that pretty easily. Um, bleed, there was a tiny, tiny little bit of bleed um, up here on the big writing. I hardly count, want to count that, but we'll, we'll call that a nine for now. Color, this is one of the great colors. I just love this color. It's Is it my absolute all-time favorite? Uh, probably not, but it's real close. Um, feathering, no feathering, superb flow. This is one of the better flowing inks I've ever used. It really has some wonderful flow properties. Same thing with lubrication. This, I, you know, I've said several times, I don't care for the, the, the Lamy and the, the Vista and the All-Star. I, I just don't care for these nibs very much. Um, I really like the nibs with this particular ink. Um, they were smooth. They flowed really nicely. This, this ink brought out the best in even these pens that I don't care that much about. When I put it in a pen I really like, uh, like, for instance, my, <laughs> my uh, LB5, my Classic Pens LB5. Oh, you know choirs of angels from on high. It, it's beautiful lubrication. Deeply saturated ink. So as a result, the shading's not great. Good sheen. Very, very good sheen. I've shown you that before. And show through, it's okay. It's a dark ink, but you still get some show through. It's actually, it looked worse than it was before, but that may be because of the light, the lighting that I was in. So um, Dry times are slow. Water resistance, we went over that a little bit. So that is the Rhodia dot pad. Now let's talk through the Tomoe River. So this is a cream-colored paper, so it's going to have a little bit more of a yellow undertone. And Tomoe River is all about maximizing on the sheen. So you can see, um, like right here on the eyes, you get some sheening there. Um, and again, all oh, here you go. There you go. That's some sheening right there. That's that's what you're looking for. It's that gold with a hint of green undertone in the sheen. Purdy. Got to be wet, though. This doesn't sheen unless it's pretty wet. Um, so again, same pens. You'll notice it's a little bit lighter in color. And this is this seems to be a pretty common thing kind of across the board that the, the Tomoe River, because the paper is even less absorbent than the Rhodia, 
it tends to be a little, you know, the ink pools a little bit more. So you get light, better shading, a little bit better shading, but maybe not as much saturation. Um, and I totally misspelled purple when I was trying to be all fancy with my writing there. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, same pens here. We got some nice sheen on the flex, which, uh, on the word flex down here, which you can't really see. But you can see a little bit better shading, especially on the 3.8 millimeter. Same dry times, almost dry by 25, completely dry by 30. Again, a little bit more shading you can see here between the different passes and then the, the swatch test with the, the deep shade, uh, sheen right there. No bleed at all. Oh, I lied. There's a little bit of bleed. So maybe we'll knock that down to a nine. A uh, little tiny bit of bleed. Color on this paper is, I, that's kind of a, a top notch for me. Uh, feathering, no feathering, really good flow, really good lubrication, excellent saturation, shading again. It's a little bit better than the shading on the Rhodia dot pad, but not, not significantly. Uh, sheen is better as well. Um, it's actually pretty darn good in really wet, pooly spots, but just in daily writing, it's not great sheen. Um, and then show through is moderate kind of a 5 out of 10. You can see it through here a little bit better than you can through the Rhodia. But that's to be, again, expected. And then cheap paper. So here's my staple 75 gram bottom of the rung copy paper. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in here just a little bit. Let me, I want you to be able to see this a little bit more up close here. So there is a little bit of feathering, but not very much. Um, this ink actually performed even up to the 1.5 millimeter stub pretty darn well on this paper in terms of feathering. You do get a little bit of feathering on the flex. I, that hardly counts. But even on the 3.8, not a whole lot of feathering. Dry times are long for cheap paper. Usually on cheap paper, because it's so absorbent, dry times... Uh, are, are pretty quick, five seconds maybe. This was actually a little bit on the long side at 15. Uh, and then if you look at the back side, you start to see a little bit of bleed through, just tiny little bits on the broad. When you get to the 1.5 millimeter, it gets worse. Obviously, you know, the, the wetter nibs do tend to do a little bit worse. But surprisingly well behaved on this inexpensive copy paper. And then kind of last, let's go through the chromatography here. So you get a nice, uh, you know, basically the way I do this is I use the 3.8 millimeter and write a stripe across the paper, let it completely dry, then I put the end of the paper in water and hold it vertically so it, you know, it sits in water like this. The water wicks up the paper and the dyes separate as it goes up the paper. Uh, so you've got a leading edge of blue here, then a very pale blue turns to a rich kind of almost aubergine purple here um, with a real dark purple edge and then a, a leading edge of blue here. So a fairly complex ink, but nothing too surprising considering the shade of purple that this is. Uh, so that is kind of my over my review of the Sailor Gentle Bung Box Imperial Purple, also known as Sumeragi. So wonderful ink. Really, really well-behaved ink. I like this ink a lot. When I use this ink up, I will probably buy another bottle um, and take it out of the old Sailor bottles and pour it into here um, because I like this bottle a lot more. Now, Bung Box inks, because they are made specifically for the Japanese market and have to be imported into the U.S., are not cheap. They run anywhere between $35 and $40 for a bottle. Um, I believe this is a 50 or 60 milliliter, it's a 50 milliliter bottle. This one is. Um, the, yeah, as as are the, the regular sailors. So it's 50 milliliters. $40, Matt, kind of $40 for a, a 50 milliliter bottle. On a per milliliter basis, that's not a great price. It's actually quite expensive. One of the more expensive things that you can get here in the U.S. Whether or not it's up to you, will you'll have to kind of make that decision for yourself. Uh, I have heard Bung Box Sapphire is one of the great blue inks of all time. This Imperial Purple is stunning. Um, there are a couple of others that I would like to try, um, but I will, but you know, I'll probably be real careful about buying them because they are so expensive. 
Inks these days, you can find similar colors from almost every manufacturer. And so it moves beyond what is the color into how does it perform. I don't think you will find an ink that performs a whole lot better than this, especially this dark saturated purple. This is one of the best performing inks in this dark saturated color I've ever used. So in that respect, it's worth it. But you know, if you don't have the money to spend on $40 for a bottle of ink, don't spend it. There are, you can get this same color from other manufacturers quite easily. So, all right. Well, I think that will do it for this Ink Spot review. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below on YouTube or over at penhabit.com. You can reach me on Twitter or Facebook, even on Google Plus on occasion. I occasionally pop over there. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks so much for watching.